hopes and dreams I had for my brother. I assumed I would see him find himself, choose a career, and grow in it. I thought I would see him grow into a man and into his own. I hoped I would get to give my approval for the woman he would finally spend his life with, unsolicited or not. <laughs> I just thought I would automatically be an aunt and revel in the wonder that my little brother was now a father. I looked forward to the day that he would be thriving and my worry for him would be less. I saw in my mind the day my father would be completely and utterly proud of him, his only son, the perpetrator of the family name. My mother would now have the opportunity to spoil her grandchildren worse than she did him. <laughs> I couldn't wait to be adult friends, despite the fact that we still had issues we needed to work out between us. I now realize how selfish these thoughts were, seeing as you are robbed of your life. And I'm now living in the fact that one can also be robbed of hopes and dreams. Hello there. And welcome to the Cocoa Butter Junkie Podcast. I'm Michelle and this is my podcast. This is a podcast on the everyday reflections and experiences of a Kenyan woman. It is my examination of life living through mental health issues, grief, growing up aka kicking and screaming into adulthood, the experiences of being a woman in Kenya, making friends as an adult, struggles with faith, and a bunch of other topics. Thank you for listening. Today I will read you some stories, poems, and thoughts I wrote the year after my brother died. As I said, COVID has forced me to think about my brother's death more in this last few months. That first year, dealing with the shock of losing him, I would write. I don't remember doing, any, doing much else to cope. Just a bunch of questions, most of which were why. I called this one that first walk. You have to numb yourself when you walk with your mother and sisters to view your only brother's body for the first time. You have to numb yourself. You wouldn't know it, nor will it be conscious, but it will happen somehow. Because you will see your brother in a coffin and wonder why you don't lose your mind, or why you're not crying. You will wait for the emotion to build up like it has since you found out he died. It won't. You'll just stand there, mind blank. You will at some point have a thought. That's really him. They weren't lying to me. They didn't make a mistake. That's him. That's my only brother lying in there. He looks like he's asleep. He's badly wounded, but he's asleep nonetheless. Maybe I can get him to wake up. Come on, bro. <laughs> wake up. At this point, you realize that these are just thoughts because your lips are clamped shut and your tear ducts chose this moment to dry up. And then you'll hear lamenting and mourning. It's your mother. When you turn and look at the woman standing beside you, completely overcome by grief, devastation and shock, you'll put your arms around her and in that mo moment realize that there is at least one thing you can't do, no matter how much you put your mind into it. You can't comfort a mother who's lost her child, her only son, a son who was intentionally taken away from her by another human being. You will hold her for what seemed like hours and try to think of ways to take her pain away. You won't think of any, because there are none. You will expect the numbness to wear off because logic states that you can't watch your mother cry in agony and not break down yourself. It won't. It won't because as of now, the only emotions that matter are your mother's. You don't have access to yours anyway. So you'll be there and offer everything you can. It won't really help. Nothing will. Because nothing can bring your brother back. At least nothing you can offer can. So I call this one Lessons from my brother's death. Lessons on friendship. 
My brother's friend may have lured him to his death. His other friends might have participated in his death. Human beings sometimes can be animals. My parents' friends and old acquaintances showed up and were there for us. It was as surprising as it was humbling. We didn't expect it, but they were there for us. Human beings can be exceedingly kind and surprise you. I expected my friends to be there. And the only one that was there wasn't the one I expected. Maybe I am a bad friend. Lessons on life. You certainly don't expect someone to die shortly after their 25th birthday. You especially don't expect them to die when they're just starting out a new chapter of their life. The day you can clearly see their future will be different is the day they die. Lessons on the afterlife. What happens to him now? What's it like on that side? Lessons on human beings. Why would anyone kill anyone? Why would you kill someone like that? Why would you watch someone die and do nothing about it? Human beings can be worse than animals. Lessons on people pleasing. Be you. Be you. Be you. Be absolutely you. This next one is called I want to be normal. I don't want to feel this ache anymore. I don't want to dread life. Don't want to be traumatized. Don't want to miss him. I want to sleep the whole night. I want to feel safe. I don't want to fear for my safety or for that of my family. I want to picture a future with all my family members in the frame. I don't want to identify with anyone who's lost a loved one. I don't want to constantly see my mother crying in agony. I don't want to see the look of devastation on my father's face or hear it in his words. I want to picture a less bleak future, a less helpless life. I don't want to be another person that's lost her brother. So I wrote this last one after hearing so many times the phrase, be strong, <laughs> be strong for your family, be strong for your parents. So I called it, be strong, with a question mark. My tears are not voluntary, neither are the weird noises that emanate from my lips. As the tears roll down my face, they are a reflection of turmoil, the pain inflicted on me. It is a natural reaction, a testament, a weight thrust on me. So I don't understand the phrase, be strong. Should I not feel the pain? Should I not express it? Should I force my lips shut? My intention was not to upset or spread my pain. If I could, I would attend to your helplessness in trying to comfort. But I would rather your silence than the words, be strong. So in short, don't tell the bereaved to be strong. <laughs> Let them cry and grieve. Death is heavy and it's painful. I don't see how being strong applies. So do you want to share with me your story of loss? It can be in any form. It can be a DM, a story, a voice note, or a poem. You can get in contact with me via my socials. Links to everything I've read today are in the show notes if you want to check them out. A book I'm reading this week is House of Stone by Novuyo Rosa Schumer. I don't know if I pronounced that right. <laughs> but yeah, House of Stone by Novuyo Rosa. Do you guys have any good book recommendations? 
I love African fiction. So let me know. You can DM me on anchor.fm slash kukubata junkie or at kukubata or at this Kenyan woman on Instagram or Twitter. So that's all for this episode and thank you for listening. See you next week. <laughs>